How are you all done? You guys are good? Awesome. My name is Yeliz, and I'm very happy to be here. And today I'm going to talk about nothing is a coincidence, this is a sign. Today is a very special day. A very, very, very special day. Because no one in this room came here by coincidence. Think about it. You made a decision in the past, and you followed it. And you're here because of a decision you made. Well, I believe that there are no coincidences in life. And your destiny is shaped at the time of your decisions. In 2004, I made a decision. And I said, I want to follow my soul's calling. So I left my hometown, Izmir, and I went to California. Well, I can tell you that it wasn't that easy. I left all my possessions, my family, my friends, and the comfort zone <laughs> of a stable corporate job. You know what I mean? Uh, so there I was in California in this uh, dream state of mine, but I wasn't in my dream state in person. Uh, I was working part-time at a job that I didn't like at all. And I was living with a friend. I actually was sharing a small apartment with my friend. I was literally living on the couch so I could pursue my dream. My dream was to do a PhD at UCLA so I can go out and help people. Help them, support them, so they can have a healthy, happy, wealthy life but I wasn't even close to it. The only class I was able to take was just psychology one, because that was the money that I saved for three months. So as you can imagine, I wasn't in a very good shape. I wasn't happy with my life, and I didn't know what to do. So one morning, I woke up with this huge pain, a lot of pain in my right ovary. So I ended up being at at the hospital and there I was lying and all these doctors were around me and they were telling me that I have to have an operation otherwise I will die because I was having a bleeding cyst and I'm like holy moly I know I'm not going to use the effort <laughs> so I was like shocked I didn't know what to do my mind was telling me how are you going to pay for this you don't even have health insurance you're barely paying your share in the house. You're not even realizing your dream. Should you go back to Turkey? What am I going to do? Well, if I don't do the surgery, would a holistic help be able to help it? Would I be able to cure it by myself? What's going to happen to me? I didn't know. And I was in pain. And my mind was constantly talking and chattering and talking and chattering. So I said, OK, I'll take a drive. I don't know if anyone uh, likes driving when th their mind is chattering. You know, like driving always relaxes me a lot. It gives me this um, motion of moving forward when I'm stuck in life. So I was driving in my car, the only thing that I had in Los Angeles, California. So I'm on uh, Robertson Boulevard. Has anyone been to LA? Okay, maybe you know the street that I'm talking about. Cool, very cool. So I'm driving on Robertson Boulevard and I'm crying. And I'm crying like crazy, because I don't know what to do. And I'm crying, and as I'm crying, I'm like, God, please, show me a sign. Just a small sign that everything's going to be OK, that I'll be fine, that I will be able to help people who see my dream. Just show me a small sign that everything's going to be OK. I'm crying, and I'm driving. And all of a sudden, I saw this big red sign. <laughs> and it said, nothing is a coincidence. This is a sign. I'm like, what? <laughs> so my mom was telling me, go, go, go. go. You've just seen an illusion. It wasn't, it wasn't real. You know, if you haven't seen that one, keep on going. But my heart, thanks to my heart, had this pull 
So I stopped. So I pulled over the car. I got out of the car, and I rushed to that place. And I'm looking around. Oh my God, what is this place? It happens to be a spiritual center. Interesting. Not a religious one, but a spiritual center. So I'm knocking the door. And I'm like, come on, like I'm hearing noises inside. I have to get inside, you know, like this is my sign. Oh my God. But no one answered the door. Hmm, and I said, wow, this is kind of interesting. Maybe it's not my lucky day. So I started to walk towards my car. And as I was walking, a shiny object on the pavement caught my eye. And I'm like, ooh, what's that? So I went down and picked it up. It was a coin. It was a penny. And at that time, I heard a man talking to me. And he said, wow, that's your lucky day. Look at you. You got your lucky penny. And then he said, I heard you knocking on the door. Today is a special uh, gathering at the center, so it's closed, but come back on Tuesday. I'm like, oh, this is cool. I got my lucky penny. I got my sign. So everything's going to be OK. So I got back into my car. And then I went home, and I couldn't wait for Tuesday, right? Because I saw this sign, ask and you shall receive. I asked for it, and it arrived, but I didn't know what to do with it. So next Tuesday, I was very excited and went back to the center. And then it was the first class, introductory class. You want to hear something crazy? Crazier than this? So I met this introductory class. They handed us these books. The books that uh, they used for connection and, you know, read it. It gives you a peace of mind. It's positive psychology, basically. I picked up the book. When I was 13, when I was in Izmir, I was using ferries to go from a site to the other side of the city. And I found a book on the bench that I was sitting. There was this black book. I picked it up. And around those times, I was always like opening the books from back to the front. I don't know if anyone does that, but with the magazines and everything, I was starting from the back. And this time, when I picked up this book, I started from the back, and the back was its actually first page. So the book was starting from the back. I'm like, ooh, this is magical. <laughs> what is this? So I looked inside. It was decoded in a language that I didn't understand. There was a little bit of English in it, but I put it to my bookshelf. Basically, it became a shelf help rather than a self-help for a long time. Guess what? The book that they gave us at the center was exactly the same book. How weird is that? I'm like, ooh, this is interesting. This is getting more interesting. So I kept on studying with the center. And I started to help people. I started to go out and help homeless people. I felt for them, because I was there. I, I'd been there. I knew exactly how they were feeling. And the more I went out and helped them, the more happy I got. Hmm. Interesting. So one day, as I'm going one of these uh, connections, thank you. Do you remember this movie? Groundhog Day? Well, for the ones that haven't seen it, Bill Murray, the main character, is actually a, a very self-centered TV weatherman. It's all about him. It's all about me, 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 me. I want this. I want that. And he's not very good with his people, like with his team, with women. Oh, my God. It's only him, right? So he goes to the city, and in that city, he gets stuck. And every day at 6 o'clock, 6 zero, zero, he wakes up with this song, the same song, and he wakes up to the same day. And he lives the same things every day. Until, until he transforms himself. I believe that there are no coincidences. I believe that each and every person come into our life for a reason. And everything that happens to us, they are there for us. 
Life is happening for us. It's not a coincidence. And until we finish our process, until we transform from me consciousness into we consciousness, life is a process of transformation. And how do I do that? Most probably you're asking that, right? Well, most of you do know about Jung, right? You heard of him? Awesome. He talks about shadows. Basically, it's our own ego, our dark sides. So transformation starts with me consciousness, finding about who we are and what are our bad sides. And then one by one, transforming them into love, into light in a way, dark into the light. And in the movie, if you remember, Bill's process finishes when he becomes friends with everyone. When he starts helping other people, his process ends. So it's all about turning the me consciousness into we consciousness. Eventually it becomes one consciousness. And when you start seeing others as a reflection of yourself, actually when you start to see you in me, and when I start to see me in you, we become one. One consciousness. And at that time, there is no time. It's just now, here, being present. You know what? The best present that you can give to someone is actually your presence. Being present with that person. And when you're there, love flows through your heart and reaches to others. Ah, oh, this is exactly what happened with me too. I found out about me, 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 me. And rather than me going to and doing my PhD and realizing my dream, I decided to go out and help other people to realize their dreams. And that's when the happiness came in. Just like in the movie, Bill finds his love of his life when he starts focusing on other people and helping other people. By coincidence, right, in life, wherever I went, whenever I was in trouble, whenever I needed some faith or inspiration, I said to myself, well, be grateful with what you have right now. Whatever you have, is exactly what you need and do whatever you can wherever you're at. And with this attitude of gratitude, things and people started to come to me rather than me running after them. And yeah, didn't I have my bad times after that spiritual happening, I saw the sign thing? Of course I did. Then I asked for a sign and guess what? The ones who follow me on social media probably do know about these coins. These lucky pennies, they come across me wherever I go, Los Angeles, New York, and exactly the, at the time that I need it the most. Whenever I'm down and I'm totally out of inspiration or I'm scared, I see something shining on the ground. She knows. <laughs> I'm starting out and then New Jersey, and then Izmir, Rome. Wherever I'm going, I'm finding these pennies, these coins. Sometimes I find crucials if I'm in Turkey, in Moda, or wherever I'm at, their money. And uh, my friends, like, they're always getting me these uh, keychains with these lucky pennies in it. I'm like, great, another one, thank you. But I am grateful. I am grateful to each and every penny I find. I am grateful to that ovarian cyst that came to me. I am grateful that I didn't have any money to pursue my dream. But guess what? I learned how to be happy with a penny. And I learned how to transform lives with a penny. I think that was worthless. So today, Wherever you're at, you're exactly where you need to be. And nothing is a coincidence. The more you give, 
the more you receive. Well, I would like to conclude my speech with a parable that I really, really love. So this uh, holy man gets into a conversation with God. And then he asks him, okay, come on. I want to see what hell is and what heaven is. God says, okay, you got it. So he shows him two doors. He goes to the first door and God opens it. He looks inside. So there is this table, and on top of that table, there is this delicious soup, smelly, like he was like, whoa, this, this smells really good, delicious soup in the middle of the table. And there are people around the table. And he looks at inside, hmm, interesting place. He notices that there are long spoons attached to their arms. And then these people, they're like really thin and tiny and they look miserable. And they're constantly fighting with each other. As they are trying to get a piece from the soup, because the long spoons are tied to their arms, they cannot have it. God turns to him and says, this is hell. And then he looks at him. Okay, let's go to the second door. They go to the second door. He opens the door, he looks inside, and everything is exactly as it is. He's a little surprised now. He sees this table and the soup in the middle of the table and people around it. The only difference is these people are very happy. They're healthy. They're laughing. They're talking. They have these long spoons attached to their arms. You know why? Because they're feeding each other. And God turns to him and says, this is heaven. The more you give, the more you receive. Thank you very much.